There you go. You beat me to it. I was about to move you on. More clapping, more cheering. Let's go. second while I uh, deploy the call. <laughs> so, to be in today, you ready? Ready? You can hold hands. Yeah. I think the holding hands is just they turn. Cool, 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 cool. To be in today, it's important that we acknowledge the Awabakal people who are the traditional custodians of the land that we're celebrating on today. I would like to pay respect to elders both past, present and emerging of the Awabakal Nation and extend that respect to all other Aboriginal people present. Now, for the first but hopefully not the last time, I've got a very special speaker who's going to come up first. You're going to come up and say something for us? Got something prepared? The prayer.
keep uh, um, please keep us safe and also please help us keep safe with nuclear time. Amen. Such a good job. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, safe family and friends. Thank you. So, so my, my name is Monty King, King and I'm a certified, certified marriage celebrant, duly authorised to solemnise marriages according to law. Welcome to the wedding of Erna Leanne Finau and Joshua Nicholas Marklin. So, it's a pretty exciting day. We're here. It's important though to say that this isn't the start of a relationship, but it's a recognition of one that already exists. Today these guys are publicly and officially affirming their love in front of you, their family and friends, both here and out in the worldwide interweb, um, and they thank you all for being here. I want to thank everybody that's travelled to be here, although obviously travel is somewhat difficult at the moment, so thank you. Uh, there's also, we'd like to acknowledge uh, family in New Zealand and Victoria that can't be here, uh, Auntie Leanne and Maka, Charlie and Ospeti, Uncle Shane and Hariata, Saba and Nikora, and all of Erina's cousins, including Joe, Junior, Snoopy, Siosi, Baby Marker, Sia and Vicky, and all the little ones across the oceans. Uh, and a shout out to Josh's brother Luke, and his best mate Seamus, who are stuck in Victoria. It's also important to acknowledge uh, those family that can't be with us, and they're not here with us anymore. It's including grandparents from both sides, and Aaron and his brother Caleb. It's the love of all of those people. You guys, everybody mentioned that makes today special. Uh, you guys specifically are here because they think that you're bloody legends. So from me and on behalf of them, thank you all for being here. Give yourselves all a big cheer. There's gonna be a lot of cheering today. Gonna to really egg you into it. So, I'm gonna tell you a love story now. It's the tale of Erina and Josh, and it goes back to the uni days when they were both studying at the University of Canberra. Erina was planning to return to Sydney to continue her studies and decided to move to a dorm accommodation for one last semester. She moved into an all-girls apartment right next to an all-boys one, which Josh did not live at, but he spent more time there than his actual home. While Erina was doing the rounds meeting everyone, being introduced by her roomies, she noticed this bulky dude having banter with the boys next door. She'd yet to be introduced to him and thought he was super cute, assumed he must have been a rugby player and was super hopeful that he would come up and talk to her. They were the only two that didn't know each other yet. The gang came over for a chat, Josh in tow, but Edna thought he was coming off as kind of rude and seemingly avoiding her. After all, he was in her house and he didn't come up and say hello. Josh had certainly noticed her. He thought Erina was stunningly beautiful and kind of enigmatic. Though she was being super polite to everyone, she certainly gave off that don't mess with me energy. And the gold tooth certainly helped with that. Josh saw Erina milling around and he couldn't take her eyes off her. Yet all the while, he was the one wanting Erina to introduce herself to him rather than some random dude explained what he was doing in her house. That, and he was just a little bit too awkward. Thankfully, one of the boys did them both a favour and introduced them. There weren't any sparks that night, but they were on each other's radar. So despite not being the smoothest of cats, Josh and Erina would see quite a bit of each other over, over the next little while and became great mates. Slow mover that he is, Josh thought that he may have even been put in the friend zone, as there was another bloke Erina was keen on. Josh even helped plan one of her dates with this other guy, like it was no big deal. One night before the date with this other boy, Erina was having a pep talk with her mates and struck up a conversation with Josh. Once again, he was hanging around like a bad smell. It was the first time that they'd really spoken to each other. They chatted all night about all things science, politics, racial injustices, astronomy, ancient history, everything. Then, bam. Erina was soon awkwardly cancelling her brunch date the next morning and went for a first date with Josh instead. That's where you go, oh. 
a double header of live music and secondhand book shopping in a hidden basement bookstore with Nepalese for dinner. And a little over a month, they were going steady. It was a whirlwind few months as their relationship went from strength to strength. From that first night talking with Josh, Erina knew instantly that she needed Josh around to challenge her, to push her to learn more, to ask more and to make a difference. She's never known anyone like him, and while he may not realise or see his impact, he has changed the world. Josh knew right from the early days that he and Erina have always been each other's ride or die. They were ready to be in it together forever, ready to support each other with no matter what life threw at them. And after the honeymoon phase of the first few months, Erina and Josh had quite a challenging time. They put their studies and careers on hold, and before they knew who they were as a couple and individuals, they were facing the many challenges that come with parenthood. When their beautiful little man Lucas came earthside, life as they knew it had someone come up, flip it and reverse it. No one quite understands raising a child like your partner. Those days heading out for brunch dates, movie nights or dorm parties, all of those carefree luxuries are no longer. For Erina and Josh, their time was now spent analysing suspicious rashes, singing lullabies or cleaning spaghetti off the floor or fishing sultanas from in between the car seats or driving around the block 6,000 times to induce sleep. And we could all agree if you can do all of that and still come out at the end of the day liking each other and wanting to come home to each other and cuddle, I think it's safe to say you can get through anything. Erina and Josh have done and achieved so much together. They are the best team. They have each other's back no matter what. They've supported each other to no end, encouraging and inspiring each other to pick up where they left off with their individual careers and continuing their law degrees and excel at it too. But their greatest accomplishment by far is getting through this parenting game together. Three years after their paths crossed and now a party of three with Lucas, Erina and Josh threw caution to the wind to start fresh here in Newcastle. Between work and study, you'll find them hitting up all the coffee haunts that Newey and the Hunter Valley have to offer, having dates at the flicks, relaxing at home, enjoying each other's company, staying in bed while having deep philosophical conversations until the late hours of the morning, or they'll be totally immersed in their own books with a cup of tea within arm's reach, exploring new worlds together in a weird way. It doesn't matter what they're doing, as long as they're doing it together, they're living their best lives. Josh adores how wonderful a mother and supportive a partner Erina is. She gives her all for him and Lucas, as well as the rest of their family, 110% always. He also adores how she never lets a lack of experience or time stop her from taking on a new project and absolutely killing it. Heading a research project for uni as an undergrad? Sure. Planning and emceeing a trivia fundraiser with bugger all notice? Easy as. Learning how to be a badass good, a badass good at cutting lino, watercolouring and sewing? Give me a couple of days. It always cracks Josh up at how Erina thinks she's cunning and a good liar but how terrible at it she really is. She's got really obvious tells and comes up with increasingly convoluted stories when you call her out. Like whether she's got peanut M&Ms stashed beside, in the bedside table. The distinctive chocolate stains are a dead giveaway, but no way is she going to admit it. It must have been something in the wash. Erina loves Josh's goofy laugh. The way he can't help but make puns at any opportunity his unparalleled determination to keep her laughing and learning and his passion to change the world. She loves how much Lucas and Josh adore each other. She loves how Josh thinks deeply, albeit frustratingly slow. That he is so thoughtful in everything he has to say. She loves that he still chooses to wake by her side even when she drools all over the pillow and is the biggest blanket hog. The worst person ever to share a bed with is the exact quote. She loves that he pushes her to be her best, even when she drags her heels. She loves the HSP runs for her on a Friday night, just because. She loves how he keeps breaking into an awkward yet enthusiastic dance when the room has been too silent for too long. And above all, she loves how he loves her. So their son sees what it means to love with patience, laughter and care. 
So how do we get to this point in the story where we're about to watch them say, I do? Well, that same year that they moved to Newcastle, while they're on holiday to Cambodia and Vietnam, Erina and Josh officially, sort of, became engaged. So Erina and Josh had climbed Mount, now I didn't read this before, it just looks like fancy pants. <laughs> fancy pan in Vietnam, and according to Josh, it was maybe a combination of exhaustion and delirium at that high altitude, but it just felt right. They asked each other, do you wanna? And they both said, yep, and now here we are. When I asked the pair the question, what does marriage mean to you? For Erina, as soon as Lucas came along, her view on marriage was much more profound. She just described this defining moment when he was born by saying, I looked at Josh and it was the first time I could see his heart was a reflection of mine. Beating for Lucas manifested in our own son. Marriage for me is this mirror that shows out to the world what they find most important. I began to see me in his heart as much as I could see our son. And that's not to say I wasn't always there, it's just when I came back into a space to love myself in my heart, I began to reflect his also. There you go. Josh said, without a doubt, we wouldn't be where we are today without each other. With Erina, marriage means complete trust and lifelong commitment to one another. Loving and being loved. Supporting and being supported. Challenging and being challenged every day. It's an affirmation of the bond we already have and a promise to preserve and honour it until one of us carks it. They both know that regardless of the piece of paper, they know just how committed they are to each other. They feel like they've been married for a long time now. They choose each other no matter what. But today is about the enormous privilege that they have to get the chance to come together with all of you, the people they value most, to connect, and especially after such a horrid year, have a chance to celebrate this bloody wonderful thing called love. Now, I said it wasn't for the last time. We spoke about, about it before, but a huge part of that love is Lucas. And I would like to invite Lucas back up here to have, let's call it an intermission. Yep. Jokes. Oh. Now I'm going to do some jokes. My first joke is what do you put I mean, what do dinosaurs put on their floors? Reptiles. Reptiles. <laughs> good work. <laughs> I'm using all my joke book ones. Yeah, that's good. What's blue and doesn't weigh much? Light blue. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Batman one. I don't know. Oh, you don't know that one? Alright, do you want to share your why you love mum and dad? Yeah? Yeah? It's alright, we've got you. We've got you. Now I'm going to say my one favourite thing about my dad and my one favourite thing about my mum. My first thing is the, my fi one favourite thing about my mum. I like how she's really kind and nice to me. And the second thing is the thing about my dad. I like how he's very funny and does lots of funny dances and um, spends a lot of time with me and does fun, very funny jokes. Good work. Yeah, round of applause for Good job. All right. So, with all of that happened, we're going to get serious now. Well, as serious as it's going to get anyway. Josh and Erina, before you were married in my presence and in the presence of these witnesses, I'm to remind you of the solemn and binding nature of the relationship into which you're about to enter. Marriage, according to law in Australia, is the union of two people, to the exclusion of all others, voluntarily entered into for life. I'm going to get in your way. He's going to go first. So we're going to do the, the legal bits, bang, bang, and Gosh, then I'm, I'm going to walk away. Okay. So... I call on the people here present to witness that I, Joshua Markleman, take you, Erin Finau, 
to be my lawful wedded partner in marriage. I call on the people here present to witness that I, Edanafi now, take you, Joshua Marklin, to be my wedded lawful partner in marriage. <laughs> Give them a big round of applause. For the people playing at home, that's the, they're actually married now. That's the married part. There's, yeah. more, there's more to come. Yeah. Sorry, there's more to come. I've only got five pages. <laughs> Before I met you, I was at best agnostic about the idea of ever getting married, but I think that's because I lacked imagination and couldn't even fathom meeting someone so amazing. <laughs> right from those early days, I've known that if there was ever someone I'd want to marry, it was you. We've walked a, a long and winding road to get here, but what a journey it's been so far. I wouldn't be who I am without you now. You give me purpose, you give me strength, you give me grounding, you give me a headache sometimes too. I think that's a fair trade-off. You challenge me every day in every way, and you make me a better person. I promise to hold you, to continue to grow with you, to stand by you and support you in all your hopes and dreams, your trials and challenges. I promise to be stubborn as a goat and drive you mental and to keep trying to make you laugh with random outbursts and truly awful puns for many years to come. I couldn't ask for a better partner in crime, and I can't wait to go old and grow old and fat and crotchety with you. No, more crotchety. I love you. I decided to go rogue um, and say what was in my heart at the moment, and it's. It's what comes to mind is a quote by a phenomenal and powerful feminist and the notion of marriage and feminism has often been seen as antipodal but love I feel as it as it binds it it ties it together um, and the quote by Audre Lorde is that you've got to learn to love yourself and know yourself before you can learn to love another person and learn to accept love. And I think that last part is what's so powerful and what I could never ever repay you for is that lesson to accept love and to love myself. As Monty shared that my idea of marriage is an idea of a re reflection of heart and to see myself in that is jarring to me because my, my ideas of love were very confused in the fear of losing it would be very difficult to love because I'd be so scared of losing you, losing Lucas, losing my parents, losing, losing those important to me. But today, seeing everyone here, having my dad here, and nearly losing him twice, already it's remarkable to know how special I am to have this much family and friendship come today to spend this moment with me with us and it is because of you Josh that I've been able to see it's it's more than just because of obligation or family duty or just anything else beyond that they love me 
and they love you and they're here for us so yeah dude I, I, I promise to be stubborn with you um, and to make life hard because we'll fight through it and iron sharpens iron and we'll um, we'll challenge our, each other for the rest of our days and sit in silence and awkwardness I love you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. claw, hang on. There we go. Oh, yeah, so I'm gonna get we're gonna get the rings up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, oh, you've got them. Oh, well, I won't have to call him up then, that's fine. Yeah. Each take the others. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then so I'm gonna talk, you're gonna put them on, remember? Yeah. If you remember, I don't know. But anyway, that's what's gonna happen. So this is the point, the ceremony where we'd usually talk about wedding bands being a perfect circle with no beginning and no end. As you each place the other's ring on their finger, start doing that now. As, we, as you each place the other's ring on their finger, consider this, rings do have a beginning. Rock is dug up from the earth, metal is liquefied in a furnace at a thousand degrees, molded, cooled and painstakingly polished. Something beautiful is made from raw elements. Love is like that. It's hot, dirty work. It comes from humble beginnings made by imperfect beings. It's the process of making something beautiful where there was once nothing at all. So these rings symbolise the acceptance of imperfections and the recognition of beauty and love. How'd we go? Got there? You! Yeah. Give them a round of applause. <clears throat> Edna and Josh. You've walked into this marriage together as equals. You've declared in front of your family and friends your love and devotion to each other. You've said some legal words. You've made some pretty mammoth promises to one another. And you've sealed those promises with the exchange of vows and rings. I'll just wait until you're ready. <laughs> Don't be sorry. You're running the show, mate. We'll wait all day. Okay. We good? All right. So you've sealed those promises by exchanging rings. Therefore, I pronounce you absolute legends, partners in marriage, seal the deal with a kiss. Give them a round of applause. Now, folks, we're just going to take a couple of moments to sign the paperwork and then we'll pop back up here and I'll get you to join with me in congratulating the newlyweds. We've got a little bit more to do, so we'll just sign the paperwork. Don't wander off too far. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Oh, 
Yeah, that's good. More clapping, more cheering. There cannot, there can't be, there cannot be enough clapping and cheering at a wedding. And that's it, day for it. All right. So, um, as something very special, I'd like to uh, ask Sal to come up. Who's going to say a prayer for us as well? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We can be here to witness and to celebrate the love and the marriage of Joshua and Leanne in, in our presence today. Thank you so much, Lord, that today is such a beautiful day. Um, thank you that uh, we get to witness the, the, this ceremony and be a part of it as well. Um, help us, Lord, to um, don't take life for granted. Make use of uh, the, every single moment we have with each other. We pray then that, uh, that your presence will always be in this marriage here, in this family, that uh, in spite of the good times and in spite of the bad times, we know with you, Father, that things will go well in this marriage. So we dedicate this marriage to you, that you will bless it, you will anoint it, because you are the one that invented marriage. And because of that, we get to participate in it and, and be blessed by this world. We also uh, thank, uh, thank you for everyone that is here today. Please uh, uh, continue to be with us as we continue to the uh, uh, second part of this uh, uh, celebration. And we just want to give you praise and to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Edna and Josh, it was love that brought you here today. And it is love that will make your marriage endure. May the three of you keep living your best lives together as a family with lots of adventures, laughter, and maybe a couple of fostered dogs down the track. May you keep excelling and supporting each other with your careers and studies. 
Perhaps soon Josh will have his own cafe selling delicious treats made by Erina in her spare time. And long term, may you fulfil the dream of both becoming successful barristers and move into the massive White House at number one Ordnance Street, the highest point in Newcastle. <laughs> may you share plenty of good times with your friends and family, with all of these people here today. May you remember and look back on all of the people here, extending their love and support and their wish for your relationship to just simply flourish and grow throughout a long and happy life together. Family and friends, give me your biggest cheer, the biggest one you possibly can, as I now introduce to you the newest of newlyweds in Newey, Erin and Josh. <laughs> and the boys. Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course. Just at lunch where we are with the reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, end of the ceremony, uh, family. Uh, now, um, just make your way up to the uh, reception area. Um, I have no idea where it is, so don't follow me. Okay? So, yeah, we're going to... Um, uh, if, if you don't know the uh, if you don't know the place, uh, please ask someone who knows and uh, get the address um, so we can all get there. Uh, as far as I know, we what time are we getting inside the restaurant? Six thirty. So you got ten minutes to get there. All right, we'll see you at the uh, uh, Rustica restaurant. We could, yeah, um, just to make it easy, you could just follow my mum and dad. Thank you, Lucas. Um, could, could, could you please, um, if you can, could you grab a chair with you and just take it up to stairs, just to help, uh, just to help out those uh, uh, people who have uh, brought it, brought them down for, uh, for us to use. Thank you. Nothing, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> 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 